For nearly everything in business, including product research, you have to make the decision into what you invest to get results, either your time or your money. Now, if your money's down, you're a little bit of a broke boy, you have to invest your time into product research tools, into AliExpress, and maybe even your local flea market to get the edge on all the other dropshippers and find that undercover gem. But if you're not an NPC and you make 2% daily gains while day trading, you have studied eight profitable skills, you have an army of uncles and an extensive investment portfolio of rare fishes, then you need to leverage other people's time and build a product research team. But before we get into the magic, if you want a team of experts to help you find winning products, products, build your website, create your ads, and manage your ads until we scale to one grand a day or more, then book a call in the link in description with my agency, Blue Ocean Digital. Just in the past week, one of our media buyers took a brand new store from zero to 15 grand a day. So if anyone tells you that dropshipping or TikTok ads is dead, they're probably a hater or your parents. So click the link in the description if you're interested. Now, the first step to building your team of product researchers is understanding what is your product research criteria. You need to be telling them this, otherwise they don't know what products to bring you back. So you might have specific niches that you like more than others. You might have specific rules with the margins of products to resell. Really, everybody's different, but I would say the most important thing that I've learned lately from all of my product tests is timing is so important. If you try to test a winning product that is doing well for other people, but it was a month or two ago, they've most likely already tapped out the market. And by the time that you've identified that product and got it prepared and ready for testing, it's probably already too late. So you really need to drill into your team that you need to be finding products that are doing well right now, not a month ago, not two weeks ago even, because those products a lot of times are just gonna be too tapped. Even when you look at products like the Shark Slides that have been blowing up, it's gonna be the next eight figure product you've probably seen on TikTok or Instagram. Otherwise you've been living under a rock and not doing your research. And with that product, I can guarantee all the people that have made a ton of money with it started selling it months ago. And if you try to sell it right now, you're not going to get great results because they've already made the majority of the sales. So I recommend using tools and using platforms like TikTok, going directly into TikTok to identify new winning products before they really go super mainstream like that. Because by the time a lot of people identify what a winning product is, it's already too late. And if a lot of beginners are talking about a product, you know, okay, it's been tapped as the beginners are finding out about it. So you have to be one step ahead of everyone when it comes to timing. Now, other things to look for in products is obviously is it unique? Is it a wow factor type of product? So with the shark slides, for instance, I mean, slippers, not the biggest wow factor, but we've seen a lot of slippers blow up recently. They had the smile slippers that were doing really well. So any type of variation on already proven concept. So cozy slippers, very proven. But the design is where they had that unique factor to them. They're having the shark slide, it eats your foot. It looks really cool. It's cute, whatever. It's a great gift. So that's where it has the differentiator. Now, the next thing, is it easily found on eBay or Amazon? No, you can't really find these shark slides at a normal store or Target or a Walmart, but online, sure. I'm sure you can find them on Amazon because so many people have sold them. But if you got in early on a new product, I can guarantee you're not going to see many sellers of that. And that's usually a good thing if you can't find a ton of content or sellers, because that really means you could be the person that taps it out the market. Now, I understand this point is a little bit controversial. And now you can have differentiating factors. You don't have to copy exactly what I teach you. Now, personally, though, I like products that are specifically geared towards a certain niche. So so maybe the beauty niche, the fitness niche, health niche, whatever it is. Again, everyone has specific niches that they like more than others. And this just comes from experience. You should be testing products in a variety of different niches to understand where you're getting the best return. And I know for me personally, I avoid certain niches like the baby niche, ugh, the pets niche, security. Those niches just have never really worked for me. I guess maybe the timing of the products that I tested have always been off. But yeah, I just never identify products that really do well for me. So you got to figure out what niche that you have the competitive advantage in, because if you really train your eye just to get good at one or two niches, you're going to make a lot of money. Now, the next thing I look for is does the product solve a problem or create a desire? So the shark slippers, they definitely create a desire. They're just really fun to look at. It's an impulse buy. When people see them they're like, yeah, that's, that looks like a cool thing that I could wear around maybe once a week. It's a nice little gag. So that can definitely work. And that's the same thing that applies to jewelry or clothing, shorts, whatever it is. Now, when it comes to solving a problem, you want to look for products that solve a pressing need for people. And the bigger the pain, the more you can charge or the more you can communicate the pain, the more likely someone is to to buy your product to solve that pain. Because at the end of the day, people buy products to solve a specific need in life. They don't really care about your product. They care about what does your product do for them. So you wanna sell the vacation, 
not the plane flight. So find products that can either save time, save money, or solve a specific pain point. It could be as simple as transforming your room, cleaning your room. It could be something where a product helps you sleep better. It really depends, but you'll know based on looking at the product, what it can solve and for what specific group of people that is for. Now, the next thing I look for is higher perceived items. Now, this does definitely have its cap because I noticed with TikTok, when you sell products that are above $70, that's usually where the impulse buy range sort of stops anything above 70. So you want to look for products between 20 to $70 and for margins, I would say three to five X, whatever the supplier is charging you. So if you're selling something that is, let's say $10 in cost to you, you want to be at least trying to charge 30, 40, 50 bucks for it. And this is something I talked a lot with Everest about. We really want to look for products where the break-even ROAS is around 1.5 to 1.6. Now, if you don't know how to calculate break-even ROAS, it is your price divided by parentheses, your price minus price. So if I'm selling something for $50 and let's say it cost me $20, it would be 50 minus 20, which is 30. And then we would do 50 divided by 30. Now that is 1.6. So anything that falls under 1.6 or lower is usually easier to scale. And when you have something that's a 1.8, 1.9, again, it just gives you less margin to play with. So it's a lot harder to scale. So it just makes it easier for you to scale. Even if you're at a 2.2 ROAS or a 2.3, you're just making more money. So of course you want to sell stuff that you can get a good enough margin. Now, the final thing I would say this goes back to products that are selling well right now. You want to look for products that have at least around 500 to 5,000 orders on AliExpress. Usually when they have more than that, I consider them pretty tapped out. But again, everyone has different rules. So you want to come up with your own criteria. And this is what you want to teach to your product research team. So after establishing your criteria, you need to be giving your team the resources, the tools, the weapons that they're going to be using to search through the forest and find your winning product. So for me, I pretty much give them access to all the top product research tools like Peaksta, PP ads, ads by drop point, all those different tools I give them access to. But I would say 80% of our products actually come from PP ads and also TikTok itself. So we teach our team a lot of times to go directly onto TikTok and look up hashtags like TikTok made me buy it, Amazon best finds, summer finds. And summer finds is obviously a great one because summer's coming up. It's going to be lasting the next couple months. So if you're really trying to find your first winning product, I would say that is one of your best shots right there. So you got to be inventive and look up different hashtags and you've got to be willing to scroll and find newer products that don't have a lot of engagement. Usually the ones at the top are the ones that are saturated, that are already tapped out. So I would say that's a really, really good place to start out and it's totally free to do. But as I mentioned, there are other tools like AdSpy and PP Ads, and I have plenty of tutorials that you can watch on how to do that. But basically, after you establish your criteria and you know what tools you want your team to use, you need to film yourself actually doing the research. So if you've never trained employees before on what they're supposed to do, you usually need to create an SOP, a standard operating procedure that they can follow to understand what their role is going to be and what they're supposed to do every single day. So usually you list out step by step what they have to do, or you have a video like this one right here that I filmed. It took about 30 minutes worth of work. And this is just me doing product research on my own and teaching every single product researcher that applied for my job, what I look for in these products, how I actually use these tools to find these winning products. Because as you can see right here, I'm using AdSpy. I'm using it for a couple minutes, showing them how to use it, showing them some stores, showing them how to do research. Now you obviously, again, want to go through everything right here. I'm doing TikTok, what I ordered versus what I got. So you can see in practice how we actually train product researchers and how we do these SOP videos. Because if you really want to automate the process, you need to have standard operating procedures everywhere throughout your business. Create systems that way you you can hire new people and have them trained very effectively compared to having to bring on everybody and you got to train them on a one-on-one -on -one live zoom and it's just a waste of time for you so just create a video have an sop document and you'll be good to go now another thing you have to do in your sop video is to define what their roles are supposed to be so with some product research teams they're just taught to find products give the people the link in the spreadsheet and that's it so they don't come up with a price for it they don't find the supplier so it's really up to you how much roles and responsibilities you want to give to them for my own product researchers I personally teach them how to find suppliers in the SOP video. So I'm pretty sure at the end of this, I go through how to identify suppliers. So I go right here on AliExpress, find a supplier. I go into CJ. I teach them where to find these products. Yep. So CJ right here. And then finally, I show them the spreadsheet that they're going to be entering and how to enter all the details. So you really have to be very thorough with this. So I personally tell them to find the supplier, tell me how much it costs, how much I should sell it for. And we have ways of actually coming up with the price that we teach in the video. And then finally, where did you find that product? The ad link or TikTok link? At the very least, you should have a spreadsheet that has the product name, supplier link, buy for, sell for, profit margin, ad link. I think those are the most essential things. And then 
then again, product researchers can make a duplicate of this and you can go through their documents, see if they have any interesting products for you to analyze. So once you have all this down, the next thing you got to do is recruit your talent because you're looking good. You're feeling good. You got your SOP videos, man, you are almost all the way done now. What you want to do is you can use a tool like Upwork. You can go to online jobs at PH. Personally, I use Upwork when it comes to finding product researchers, and I would do a job post like this. So I typically name this dropshipping product research virtual assistant. Man, does that sound fancy. So we're going to do market research, dropshipping as the main skills. And then when it comes to the scope, usually doing more than six months, intermediate level. I will say with product researchers, usually good ones last about six to nine months before they sort of get burned out and they don't really bring in any new interesting products. I do get with some people, they do use usually get rid of product researchers after a month or two, but I feel like six months is a good range. Now, when it comes to pay for your product researchers, this is why you want to typically find people from the Philippines and third world countries where this is a lot of money to them, because usually you're going to pay about four to seven dollars an hour. Now, personally, I pay my product researchers about seven to seven fifty an hour, and they work for me for about 30 hours a week. And it's up to you how much they want them to work as well. So maybe you only want your product researchers to do 10 hours a week or five hours a week. It really depends based on what you're looking for. But I I like full-time product researchers that can do 30 hours a week for me at least. And when it comes to how many products should they bring to me every single week, I typically like them to bring, I would say around 50 to 100 products so that I can really analyze them. And I'm usually gonna pick out about five to seven really good products for us to test at the agency. So again, it depends. You need to establish what the criteria is, but when you typically tell them like, hey, I expect exactly this amount, they might just half ass it and put a lot of bad products on the list just to meet their quota. So I don't really give people a quota. I just say, hey, I want 30 hours a week. I just generally need you to find around this many products and they're cool with that. Now, when it comes to the job post on Upwork, you can definitely model what I'm doing right here. Just keep it short, simple, concise to the point. And you can also attach your SOP video so that these product researchers understand what they're actually getting into because they don't know about that work. Now, when it comes to hiring, this obviously depends on your budget. So if you're a broke boy, you might just have to hire one product researcher a initially, and then you can get into more and more and more, but you usually want to have a team of about two to three researchers bringing you around 40 to 50 products each. And that way you can pick out the one, two, three great products every single week for you to test on a one product store or your general store. That's a very effective way of doing it because it really is a numbers game when it comes to product research. It's hard to find product researchers that are just going to consistently bring you back 20 to 30 really good products. But if they bring you a large quantity, usually you can pick out a few diamonds in the rough. So again, it's about quantity over quality when it comes to this, because it's really really hard to teach people exactly what to look for in a winning product when they're not even dropshipping themselves. All they're doing is doing product research. So it's hard for them to really know exactly what to look for. Now, after you do your job post, you need to be doing trials with every single person that applies because you want to look for a players on your team that obviously have the skills. They just need to be guided a little bit into the direction of how you do things. You don't want to be completely building up and training up a brand new product researcher. No, that's just way too much time and work and the return on investment is not great there. So really what you're going to do is typically get 10 to 15 people that apply you're going to give them let's say 30 to 40 dollars so have them do about six to seven hours of research and then give them the sop video give them logins to all your tools give them the spreadsheet and then after six to seven hours they'll give you a list of products and i'll show you a few examples for you to analyze and see if they have any potential now when it comes to these trials typically product researchers don't put a lot of effort into it so you actually want to look for quality in the products that they give you because they're not going to give you a whole lot of quantity typically like as you can see right here this person gave me six products. It really wasn't anything crazy, but you want to look for products that you actually feel like you would test yourself. So if you can find one or two good products from their list, that is someone you should potentially look into hiring. So for instance, with this girl, Christine, we have this rotating... Oh my gosh, that is a lot of different storage compartments for candy. Jeez Louise, but it's a pretty interesting product. I mean, I guess for a lot of mothers and people that love these different kitchen gadgets, it can be a really cool way of just organizing everything. But for me, when I look at that, it just brings me back nightmares because I didn't brush my teeth when I was a child, so I'd get constant cavities. So nowadays, even though I do brush my teeth, I don't even really eat candy because I'm just afraid of getting another one. I even have like a special needs charcoal toothpaste because my teeth are just so weak and sensitive and the enamel just got absolutely destroyed, but that's besides the point. So after you go through all the trial work and you see all these different lists, you wanna just pick out obviously the one to two that you feel like had the most winning products from their list. And then from there, you're gonna determine how many hours you want them to work. So personally, usually, I'm paying about $7 an hour. I'm going to have each product researcher work 30 to 40 hours a week. So you do the math. That's about $1,000 a month to get a ton of products thrown your way. And then once you hire your product researcher, it's just smooth sailing from there, unless they actually don't give you good products. But 
if you did hire the right way, you should be getting a spreadsheet like this every couple of days with around 20 to 30 products for you to analyze. And it's just so much easier to go through a spreadsheet, click on some products, and then make that split second decision if it's interesting compared to you having to grind for hours on AliExpress or TikTok. And man, it just gets so boring and you get so much fatigue. But when you can find people that are experts at it, man, does it just save you so much time and gives you better quality products. Now, if you're wondering how to actually evaluate products once you get them in this spreadsheet format and don't have to grind your butt off anymore, what I typically do is I just go to the ad link from whatever the product is from. I'll look at the video, see if it's interesting to me. Does it have some wow factor? Oh, we got the talking, dancing cactus. I actually did like this product. And personally, when I saw this amount of engagement, one share for every three likes is absolutely insane. Typically, if ads get a one to 30 ratio, that's really good. So I was really interested in this product, even though it was for babies. Yeah. I went to the next step of my process and I saw that, okay, this cost me seven bucks. We can probably sell it for 25, maybe even 29 if we're really pushing it. And then I realized, okay, it's got everything that I'm looking for. Margins there, it's the right price point. It's got the wow factor for a specific target audience. Let's go ahead and test it. So you really have to do that. And it's just so much easier. It takes like 15, 20, 30 minutes to go through a list of products like this. And I usually will record a loom video and I will be recording my reactions to products so that my product research team can see that. And they can know exactly why I rejected a product, why I decided to approve a product and that way they can refine their process and just find better quality products that they know that I will like. Now, a potential problem of all of this is if you have multiple product researchers and they're all bringing you, let's say 50 products a week, that's 200 products you have to review every single week and you might not have the time to do that. So I would recommend if you're at a level where you can hire a manager or someone that has e-com experience to go through these products and then they build a list of the products they like from those 200. So let's say they pick 20 to 30 great products and then you go through that more refined list of 20 to 30 pick out the five to six really good ones that way you can really narrow down and only pick the products that have the most potential and are most likely to succeed and that's exactly how we train product research teams and test hundreds of new products every single month at my agency blue ocean digital